Hello and welcome to yet another program on your health. I'm Marie Yambo. Our Twitter handles are at Marie Yambo and at KBC Channel One. We'd like to hear from you. Now, it is the second most diagnosed form of cancer in the country after breast cancer, that is cervical cancer. It is estimated that every year, 5,250 women in the country are diagnosed with the disease and about 3,286 cervical cancer deaths occur annually. At the same time, 10.3 million women aged 15 years and above are at risk of developing the disease in the course of life. Well, Millicent Kagonga is one such woman. In 2015, life took a downward turn. She was diagnosed with stage 4 cervical cancer. Her story is one of resilience and determination to live. Let's take a listen to her story now. It has been seven years since Millicent Kagonga was first diagnosed with cervical cancer. Although in remission now, it was a treacherous journey, one that not only led to her divorce, many other times she contemplated suicide. I got pregnant and I got my first born at the age of 14. I got my second born at the age of 16. I got my third born at the age of 20. So 2010 is the year when I started having this abnormal uh, abnormal abnormal discharge and maybe uh, living in the slums of Korogosho, by there we didn't have the information about uh, the discharge, uh, the abnormal discharge and we didn't know anything about cancer. Especially in the community in the slums where I used to live, we thought that cancer was made for the richer people but not for the poor people poor people. So me being a poor girl who used to wash uh, for people's clothes so that I can have a daily uh, living, uh, I knew that I can't have cancer and uh, I lost my marriage because of the abnormal discharge and it was the same way I lost my marriage because of uh, it was the same way I lost my daughter, and uh, I kept quiet for almost five years. And uh, in, 2015, in 2015, that's when I saw someone on television talking about signs and uh, symptoms of, uh, of uh, cervical cancer, and I opened up for uh, the lady that I was working to, and she encouraged me to go to the hospital. That's when I was diagnosed with cervical cancer. Back in 2010, Millicent began experiencing unusual bleeding. It was not until five years later that she visited a doctor who delivered the devastating news. I felt broken. I wanted to commit suicide. And uh, me, I was raised up with a stepmother. So I saw myself dying early at young age and leaving my children suffering. So uh, when I wanted uh, to commit suicide, I thought I want, uh, let me just go kill my children and then kill myself. And uh, I felt very bad. Like uh, you can imagine uh, being a young girl, a single mother, having a bright future in the life uh, for your kids, uh, thinking a lot about your kids and the way they are going to have a bright future. And now you have cancer. It's like, well, a half of you is dead already. So what are some of the signs and symptoms that you experienced? At first, uh, uh, before I talk about the signs and symptoms of cervical cancer, I would love to tell any woman out there, you don't need to wait for the signs or symptoms. You just need to do uh, the screening every year and make sure your daughter is already vaccinated because if you wait for the signs it might be too late. Uh, for me I started having this abnormal discharge and uh, pelvic pain, back pain and hip, uh, hip pain and then um, that is some of the signs that I, wish I had and uh, I didn't think that something is wrong somewhere. Happy to finally understand what was ailing her, nothing prepared her for the difficult journey of seeking treatment. After the diagnosis, uh, I knew that I'm going to be treated and then get well. That is uh, everything that, uh, every, every mindset of uh, any other, any cancer patient or any person who has been diagnosed. You knew that uh, if I'm going to be diagnosed, then I will be, I'll be treated and that's all, which is not... Uh, which is not that, uh, which is, uh, which is not the issue. Like uh, right now, after the treat treating cancer is one thing and uh, uh, surviving cancer is another thing. A casual laborer who washed clothes for a living, it meant not having sufficient funds for treatment. The stigma was too much to bear. I had this discharge and I wasn't able to afford sanitary towels. 
So I, I used my t-shirt to cater for, uh, to take care of the discharge. And the discharge was so heavy until I can't, I can't stay without anything. And if I was blessed to have a, 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 a sanitary towel, I used to use like 10 sanitary towels per day, more than 10 sanitary towels per day, which is, it's hectic. I can only say, women out there, don't let yourself to go through that because it's hectic. And uh, being a woman and knowing that you can't be able to satisfy your man, don't let yourself go through that. That is the big message that I can tell women out there. The memory evidently still painful. Giving up the fight for her life was not an option, and one thing kept the fire burning. When you are going through the cancer journey, you need someone to listen to you, and you need someone to hold your hand. And uh, that is what I really lacked from my, fa from my family or from my friends. And also, most of people knew that uh, thought, if we are going to share like toilets or if uh, we are sharing things, I uh, will be able to infect with them, I will be able to, they will be infected with cancer from me. And uh, I was raised up uh, in my community, in my family, some of the family members thought it's a car, some of the family members thought like uh, it's a cane from God. So that is some of the challenges that I went through. But uh, I got uh, some, uh, I got some people who really helped me to walk in the journey. Some was the women that I used to wash clothes. Some was uh, my employer because I was once a house girl. Some was the patient that we were treated together. And that's how I get my treatment. You said that you, you contemplated on committing suicide. But what is that thing that kept you going? What is that that gave you the, 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 the courage to keep fighting? My children. I looked to my children and I told myself I want to give my children the best. I want my children to know, even if uh, one day I'm going to be no more, but my children will be, will be able to stand strong and say that our mother was there for me. And also the other cancer patients that we were being treated with, they really gave me hope. And that's where I got my energy. Now cancer-free, Millicent dedicates her time to public awareness of cervical cancer through her organization, Symbol of Hope Warriors. Uh, in 2017, I got a lot of support from my fellow cancer patient. Uh, most of cancer patients encouraged me and they were there to listen to me. Other cancer patients prayed for me when I lose hope in this God. Uh, other cancer patients came with their food brought their food to me, they gave me something to cover the corridors. When we were going through the challenges, they really talked to me. And I told myself, if I'm going to get another opportunity, I'm going to start a, a support group so that I can be able to, I'm going to start a support group so that I can be able to help more Millicent out there. You can imagine I started having discharge and I, I kept quiet with the discharge for five years, from 2010 to 2015. And uh, I asked myself, how many women out there who are quiet with their symptoms and they are dying in silent because they don't have someone to talk to or they think, or any person that they are trying to share what they are going through, that person is ready to judge them. Because with cervical cancer, there is a lot of judgment. With cervical cancer, you can't have, you can't get married or you lose your marriage because of cervical cancer. And most women are keeping quiet because they are, they are, they are men decide to uh, to move on with other other women and these women with battling cancer they are dying silent so i started this uh, uh, organization called symbol of hope warriors whereby it's based in kariobangi but we walk uh, this journey with most women and uh, anybody who is walking in with uh, with cancer and doesn't have an ear to listen to a person a person who is ready to hear the challenges that they are going through we are ready to listen to them in 2019 kenya rolled out the hpv vaccine against the human papilloma virus that is the cause of cervical cancer 
The vaccine targets teenage girls aged 10 to 14 years. For Millicent, the fight against cervical cancer is personal. After seeing the devastating effects of the disease, Millicent was determined that her daughter will never have to endure the pain of the disease. You've come through this journey and there's a lot that you've learned through this journey. What message would you have for women in general and for those who have daughters in as far as the HPV vaccine is concerned? Okay, when I was going through my, my treatment, I heard of these other countries uh, uh, with the being vaccinated, they are girls. And I told myself, if this vaccine is going to become in Kenya, I would love my daughter to be the first one to be vaccinated. And I'm glad uh, my daughter was the first one to be vaccinated when the vaccine was launched at Mombasa. And uh, uh, the, the, uh, I'm, I'm a happy mother because my daughter will... Uh, I, I was thinking if I won't be able to vaccinate my daughter, in the next 20, 30 years, my daughter will come to me asking me some question that I won't be able to answer. Like, mom, you knew that you knew this and uh, you went through this cancer. Why did you leave me to go through the same journey? So that's why I accepted my daughter to be vaccinated and uh, she has already gotten the two doses and she's, uh, she's okay, she's good. And uh, for the mothers out there, I would love to tell them, don't leave your daughter to go through what I went through. Like you see me now, I'm 32 years, but I can't have a child anymore. And uh, I, I, I'm going through a lot of things that you can't see. Uh, and then don't let your girls to come to you in the next 20, 30 years asking you, why did you give me the opportunity to live well? Why did you protect me? Why did you want me to go through this hell? Because treating cancer is not a job. In 2017, I got 14 pints of blood. So, and uh, being, uh, it's better to prevent than to treat because it is not an easy journey to walk with. The United Nations Children's Emergency Fund, that is UNICEF, is one of the organizations that has ensured availability of the HPV vaccine in the country. Dr. Colin Stabu is a vaccine specialist with UNICEF. I started by asking him how effective the HPV vaccine is. Thank you, Marie. Uh, first of all, I would like just to share with you that uh, cancer is the uh, third most important killer of people in Kenya. The first two being uh, infectious diseases and, uh, and um, uh, uh, cardiovascular diseases. The third is cancer. Now, within this country, we do know that uh, at least 33 in every 100,000 women suffer cervical cancer. This is a huge number. And we lose at least nine women daily to cervical cancer. That's how serious it is. So the vaccine is being offered to girls uh, between the age of 10 to 14 years, if, I, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Why is it important that you're only targeting girls of that particular age? The vaccine is targeting 10-year-old girls because, as you know, the HPV, uh, uh, the cervical cancer, 99% of it is as a result of HPV, which is a human papilloma virus infection. The human papilloma virus infection is largely sexually transmitted and uh, quite a number, almost half the women suffer it in their lifetime. So you want to be able to catch, uh, uh, to get the young girls, young women, before their sexual debut, before they become sexually active, so that you minimize the chances that by the time you vaccinate them, they have already contracted the HPV infection, which causes cervical cancer. This is why we vaccinate them at 10 years uh, of age. Yeah, so the vaccine would still be beneficial to those particular individuals, although to a lower level com compared to individuals who have not been exposed to the HPV. So uh, uh, programmatically, to the best of my knowledge, the Ministry of Health is not offering the vaccine free of charge to those particular age groups. The vaccination of boys or vaccination of older women, perhaps someone who is in their 30s or something like that and they wish to access the vaccine, they would be able to access the vaccine in the health facilities, uh, perhaps at their own cost, for instance. But uh, programmatically, the government, Ministry of Health, uh, Government of Kenya, is offering the vaccine free to girls who are between 10 to 14 years of age. So how accessible is the vaccine and where can it be accessed? 
Yeah, so it, for this country, uh, 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 the vaccine is being offered free of charge in both public, private, and uh, 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 NGO health facilities for any girls who are between 10 to 14 years old. So all of those girls are eligible. For routine purposes and to allow monitoring, the girls are vaccinated as they attain the 10 years of age, just so that uh, uh, programmatically then it's feasible as set by the Ministry of Health and to allow sufficient planning. But any girl who is 10 years, between 10 to 14 years of age, is eligible for vaccination and can access the vaccine at any public or private uh, NGO health facilities. Thank you. There have been arguments that um, the provision of this vaccine can actually lead to more women not actually you know, going for pap smear. I don't know what you can say about that. Uh, if you're vaccinated, um, you would still need to go for pap smear. Remember we have said that the vaccine protects uh, uh, against uh, 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 HPV infection, less than 99%, uh, but it doesn't necessarily cover all the serotypes. There's a small likelihood, a very minor likelihood that you might, uh, you might still contract cervical cancer, although it's very rare. So this is why we still need to, uh, 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 to go for pap smear when we attain a reproductive age. Uh, also, uh, as a country, the strategy for prevention uh, and control of cervical cancer goes beyond vaccination. We also have uh, 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 the um, primary prevention measures in which we encourage the girls to abstain from sexual activity. And if they do, they need to be faithful to one partner. And if they do again, they must uh, uh, have sexual activity, then they must use the barrier measures, the protection. Remember, it goes beyond HPV infection to protect yourself against other infections as well. We have sexually transmitted diseases, we have HIV, we have teenage pregnancy and many others. So we have to guard against those. So then the vaccine also comes in, but beyond that, as I've said and I've shared before, we also encourage routine screening that uh, 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 women are able to go, at least uh, beyond the reproductive age, they're able to go for routine screening at least once. In terms of the side effects, um, the vaccine, like other drugs, is not totally devoid of side effects. But um, major side effects have not been witnessed, they're extremely rare. Uh, what we see and what we have seen in, uh, uh, since the introduction of this vaccine is that is minor side effects. We have a bit of pain at the site of injection, we have a bit of numbness at the site of injection, we have a bit of uh, discomfort within the arm, but which recovers on its own. Occasionally, because you're vaccinating uh, 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 girls and, and sometimes you have a bit of um, uh, 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 emotional disturbances uh, uh, because of that, but it's not directly due to the vaccine. It's about the fear of injection, perhaps the fear of pain and so forth. I, I'll be able to highlight the challenges from a positive, positive uh, perspective that unlike the other vaccines we've introduced in the past, this is one of the vaccines in which, uh, in supporting the government to roll out, we saw a lot of government commitment, a lot of government engagement of stakeholders uh, uh, going beyond the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Gender, Ministry of Education, to the civil society, to the communities, and just educating them about this vaccine. So the anticipated challenges that most other countries faced to a large extent, I would say they were less here. But nonetheless, it's not that they didn't exist, they really did exist, uh, that is one. So the biggest challenges we did face initially was uh, 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 one, at maybe community level, just the myths and misconceptions about the vaccine. The vaccine coming in perhaps as an agent of birth control, which is not true. So we had a lot of engagements and, and a lot of sharing of information and uh, uh, talking to all stakeholders, sharing uh, uh, the evidence around these, and even having uh, uh, personal interest stories of people who've been vaccinated before the vaccine, and they're able to have children, and even sharing human interest stories around countries that are even vaccinating boys. So we were able to overcome this, and the rollout has been smooth. The second challenge that uh, uh, has been witnessed within the country, at least from the perspective uh, of supporting the Ministry of Health to roll this particular vaccine, was the vaccination has largely been health facility-based. 
but remember most of the girls are actually in schools. So in the initial periods it meant that girls had then to find time away from school to go for this particular vaccination. But I'm very glad the government invested uh, heavily with the support of UNICEF, WHO and other partners in supporting targeted school outreaches so that the vaccine was brought out to the communities, the vaccine was brought out to the schools. And uh, in the last about one year we've seen a more than double doubling of the number of girls who've been vaccinated just by having the vaccine taken to the communities, the vaccine taken to the schools where then these girls can be able to access this. So this, been, this has been a very positive step. Uh, third, uh, in the initial, uh, 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 at the time of introduction of this vaccine in 2019, we had global supply challenges of this particular vaccine. So we were able to, uh, as a country, the Ministry of Health was only able to target about 800,000 girls for vaccination. So these vis-a-vis -vis the target or the vision that the government had, the mission uh, ministry and the partners had to protect all of the girls within that particular age bracket. But this has eased out, the supply challenges have eased out and now we, we're having a series of targeted community outreaches and very soon we're going to have a, a, an element of multi-age cohort vaccination so that even those girls who might have missed the vaccine earlier and were eligible for vaccination would be able to access this vaccine so that any girl who is between 10 to 14 years of age would still be able to get this vaccine. Um, and, and the vaccine was perhaps brought to them in their schools, in their communities, and all that for a limited period of time. So those are the three big challenges that we did witness. My clarion call to the Kenyans, my fellow Kenyans, and um, from UNICEF and being supportive of the government of Kenya to roll out these vaccines, is this one, that vaccines save lives. Vaccines have saved a lot of lives, and let's join hands to be able to protect our children, girls and women from cervical cancer and other diseases that would otherwise kill them in the absence of these vaccines. Thank you. Prevention is better than cure. Early diagnosis remains key to treating the disease. Even as we observe the Breast Cancer Month this October, remember cervical cancer is preventable. Until next week, I'm Mariambo. Goodbye for now. <music>